If uh, everybody would take their seats, please. My name is Tom Langenstein, and on behalf of uh, the Marconi Society, our colleagues at the Marconi Society and the Stanford Center for Position, Navigation, and Time, we welcome you to our uh, joint uh, symposium this year. So we're in a DOE facility here, and we need to forewarn you about what happens in case of an emergency. Uh, so as I said yesterday, we are about a mile or two from the San Andreas Fault, but we're in a brand new building. <laughs> um, so if you want to take a moment to just take a look at this chart. And... If you haven't already discovered, there is power at every seat, um, just right underneath. Um, and uh, if you want to use the internet, um, you turn on your computer, turn on the browser, and the browser will come up to the Slack portal as a visitor. And all you have to do, you don't have to fill in all the information, you just hit agree. And if you have any trouble with the internet, we have some people here who can fix that. <laughs> yes, all ten fingers. <laughs> um, and uh, do uh, silence or turn your cell phones way down. And we're in a different auditorium. You've noticed the little speakers in front of you um, at every site. Um, the way it's set up, only one audience um, a microphone can be activated at one time. So what we're going to do is, if you, when you have questions, raise your hand and we'll point out, then you hit the microphone. Uh, that's the one that will be activated and then turn it off afterwards. Uh, we decided not to print um, a bunch of uh, agendas and, and the like this year. All the agendas, the agenda for today, um, uh, bios for each speaker, uh, who's attending, and maps are all available online if you have your laptop uh, um, at, uh, at just Google SCPNT and you'll, uh, you'll find it there. And let me also forewarn you that we are filming today's uh, invited speakers. So if there's any issues with that, please let me know. Uh, and finally, I, I, we want to make sure uh, to thank our sponsors. Our sponsors uh, allow this event to take place. They also sponsor many of the, uh, the grad students that uh, if you were here yesterday, you saw, um, saw them speaking. So I, 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 next, I would like to, to introduce uh, Professor David Payne. He was awarded the 2008 Marconi Prize and currently serves as chairman of the Marconi Society. Uh, he's the leading professor at the University of Southampton and director of the Opto Electronics Research Center, the Zeppler Institute, and co-director of the Photonics Institute in Singapore. Lots of different uh, locations there. The vast tra transmission capacity of today's internet results directly from the iridium-doped fiber optic amplifier, EDFA, invented by David and his team in the 1980s. He's published uh, something over 650 conference and journal papers, and as an entrepreneur, David's activities have led to a cluster of 11 different spin-off companies uh, around the Southampton area. In 2013, David was knighted by Her Majesty the Queen for services to photonics. Please welcome Sir David Payne. Well, thank you for that very uh, generous uh, introduction. Um, the reality is that uh, I was brought up in Africa 
Um, and uh, I got on the ship to go to Southampton. I've been there ever since, which uh, is a remarkable uh, lack of imagination, but uh, that's why I'm there. So um, I have the honor to be uh, the, uh, the chairman of uh, the Marconi Society. So on behalf of the society, uh, let me welcome you uh, to this celebration uh, for uh, Brad Parkinson, uh, the Marconi Laureate for this year. Now, as I explained uh, to Brad, there's uh, only one time in your life, really, that uh, you get to have a designer conference, and this is it. Uh, so you can have the people that you really, really want to hear, hopefully, um, and, uh, and that's exactly what today is all about. So it's something very, very special um, for, for Brad. So um, I'd also like to, um, to, to welcome the representatives from our sister organization um, in uh, Bologna, Italy, uh, the Fondazione um, Marconi, uh, who've come a long way to, to be with us today. That's uh, Giovanni Carazza. So the Marconi Society uh, was formed uh, in 1974 um, by Gioia Marconi. And the first of the prizes um, was given in 1975. And of course, they honor extraordinary uh, contributions to global communications uh, that we have today, uh, which are, of course, wireless, which is what Marconi is famous for, but also today to include the internet um, and optical communications. Uh, I should um, plead for a little bit of, uh, of leeway on, on, on your behalf because um, being an optical guy myself, I'm not even sure what GPS stands for. <laughs> but um, I will be on a panel later today um, and um, I pointed out that I knew nothing about GPS and uh, so my colleague said, well, that never stopped you before. Uh, so so um, you'll hear from me again a little later. And so what I do know about GPS um, was gained largely from uh, the Paul Barron Young Scholars uh, Colloquium that we had yesterday. Um, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, one of the great initiatives uh, of the Marconi Society has been our Young Scholars Program. And if, uh, if you heard them yesterday or you get to meet any of them today, you will realize just how powerful a concept that was to take the youngest, brightest, the best, and mentor them as our leaders in telecommunications uh, for tomorrow. So let me turn to um, introducing uh, Brad Parkinson. And um, his colleague, uh, Jim Spilker, um, will, be, will be doing that. So a, a few words about Jim. Um, he's going to introduce our, our prize winner. And he knows him probably better than almost anyone. Jim himself has had a long and successful career in the electronics industry. And uh, I've had to edit his bio because it's so long it would take most of the day to read it out. And so the highlights that I've chosen um, are that he was one of the original forces that created the GPS system, especially with the development of the original signal structure. Uh, Jim was the founder, chairman, and CEO of Stanford Telecommunications from 1973 to 1999. He co-authored the book with Brad, Global Positioning System, Theory and Applications, and he was one of the co-founders of Stanford's PNT Center. He's been a generous contributor to Stanford, and the new Nanotechnology and Applied Engineering Building has been named in his honor. So please welcome Prof. Jim Spilka. So some of you know that I had a rather humble beginning. Alan, Getty, give you a couple of sentences about about that because it, uh, it uh, brings about uh, my, my, my belief that uh, I 
and my wife owe Stanford and our country a great, a great deal because we started from nothing. In New York, a few years ago, at the Waldorf Astoria uh, celebration, I, I gave a short talk. Um, I said, no one would expect anything much to come of a, of a tiny, sickly, little graduate uh, of high school to amount to much of anything with poor eyesight and he had no bed to sleep on. And his uh, mother was very hard working. She had to get up at five in the morning to catch a, uh, she had to get, catch a bus at five in the morning to her job in San Francisco, which was very low paying. But fortunately, professors at Stanford enabled him, that is me, to get scholarships to Stanford so that I could go to Stanford for five years and yet get all three degrees. Move forward to uh, 11 years ago when I met with uh, three deans and I had proposed this uh, this Center for Position Navigation and Time. And I needed to talk to three deans because it was a faculty-oriented uh, research center. And, and one of the faculty was from physics, not engineering. Fortunately, those people, those, those deans supported my uh, my uh, proposed uh, research center. And today, I'm happy to say that we have now are sitting here with the 10th Annual International Symposium. And I'd like to, I'd like to have us all have a round of applause, not for me, not for me at all, but for Tom Langenstein, who has been the real workhorse for setting up this center, not just for this, this one today, but for many in the past. So Tom, would you please stand up? <clears throat> Now my real, <clears throat> my real role here today is to say a few words about my friend of 43 years, my close friend of 43 years, Brad Parkinson. <clears throat> Brad began his, his uh, stellar education <clears throat> not at the Air Force Academy, because at that time there was no Air Force Academy, but rather at the U.S. Naval Academy. And then a few years later, he got his Ph.D. here at Stanford in the Air and Astro Department. So that then follow, was followed by many years <clears throat> as a Air Force a pilot during the war and, and as a educator <clears throat> and, and as a uh, test pilot. So he, he then became uh, a full colonel, I think, one of the earliest, one of the youngest full colonels of the Air Force ever. And, and that is not a simple achievement 
in itself. But what he, what he, what he was given the responsibility for at that point was to take over the responsibility for a new position navigation in time satellite navigation system. Now, in truth, there had been two previous uh, Air Force navigation uh, system studies, one being 621B uh, and the other being the Defense Navigation Satellite System, both run by uh, very competent uh, Air Force officers. And, and you might wonder, we all know that, uh, that Brad was able to be successful in bringing about a, a real worldwide uh, transformation of, of, uh, of the nav navigation for the world. How did he do that? When, when previous very excellent uh, Air Force officers did not, were not able to do the same. And I'll give you, since I was there at the time, in 1973 and for many years after, I'd like to give you a few of my comments. Uh, Brad may disagree with some of them, but I, uh, I think he should get credit for some of these uh, uh, anyway. Uh, well, the first one is that uh, with the support of the Undersecretary of Defense and some of his senior officers, some of his senior executives, Brad was able to put together a vision a clear and concise vision of uh, a navigation system, a navigation time and positioning system that would be worldwide, all weather, at real time, and with great precision. Nowhere in the history of the world had any such thing ever existed previously. Secondly, in contrast to, to uh, many of the previous uh, Air Force uh, program managers, uh, Brad uh, took it as, as his position to add uh, extremely competent Air Force officers to the, to the aerospace uh, contingent of, of, uh, of engineers. And that contingent of Air Force officers was, was extremely valuable, in my opinion, to the success of the program. And, and, and that was something that was unique in the uh, in, in, uh, program offices that I, that I would witness elsewhere in the, in the in U.S. Air Force. So that was the second, second major accomplishment. Thirdly, he, he vision that system to be not just Air Force, but, uh, but a, a multi-dimension uh, Air Force, Navy, Army, uh, and included within that Coast Guard and, and the FAA. So from the very outset, uh, we were looking at something that was both military as well as commercial. So, so that that was a a another another key 
element in the success story. Finally, the U.S. Navy had a missile system that they needed to track with great precision in the Pacific Ocean. And, and uh, Brad viewed that as a, a, a key opportunity uh, to add two more satellites to the funding that he had for four satellites to have uh, number six uh, satellite be available to, to operate with that objective in mind. So here were uh, a, a whole set of objectives and key, however, was how on earth was he going to get this system built and up and operating with, with the schedule that had been set forth by uh, the Navy for their launch of their new missile system. And, and he was able to do just that. So that cadre of, of uh, achievements that Brad, unlike any other individual in the Air Force, was able to put together I think is is something that deserves tremendous uh, recognition. <clears throat>